We'll have Coach DeBoer begin with his opening statement and we'll do questions. Coach. You bet. Yeah. Good morning or afternoon, I guess. All right. Uh, appreciate y'all being here and uh, it was a good weekend for us. Uh, everything's a first, right? Uh, going on the road is our first time together with our staff and hope you guys did a nice job. I was happy, uh, obviously, with the outcome, but also just uh, the process and, uh, and everything leading up to it and how the, how the weekend went. So I uh, thought they had a great balance of high energy, uh, passion, emotion, uh, but not all not being over emotional and uh, having a business-like mindset. And, Going and just knowing that uh, it was going to be you versus a you know, great great crowd there. And uh, thought we did a nice job, you know, just staying the course and made the plays, got the momentum on our side, uh, especially there in the second quarter. Uh, the end of the half especially was, uh, was, a, was a big deal. You know, I preach to the guys, keep playing, uh, keep believing, and uh, things will come your way. We're athletic enough. We got playmakers, and that's exactly what happened. Getting the stop, getting the field goal attempt, and, uh, flipping that around at 36 seconds or whatever it was, and getting some points and then doing it again. I uh, thought that was a big, big piece of what we preach uh, each and every day, and uh, it happened. So, um, some things I know you met with, you saw, heard from the coordinators, but I think uh, not having the special teams coordinator up here, I think one highlight also is just how James Burton's been doing uh, kicking football. He's a game changer. He can flip the field uh, really on any kick. We saw that again on Saturday, and uh, you know, just Proud of the way he goes about it. He's a he's just you know quiet, but uh, man, when he hits the ball, it's a uh, it makes a noise, and uh, you know, I mean that in a lot of ways. And so it's uh, fun seeing him do his thing at a high level. So um, I thought you know as far as how he handled the, the environment and the noise, I thought the offense did a nice job, uh, did a great job in the week of preparation. Felt like they were they were ready for whatever was thrown at them, uh, and uh, um, you know. I think coordinators probably talked about some of the, the turnovers and takeaways and uh, how we were better there, uh, how we were better on third down, um, solid in the red zone again. So a lot of those main things uh, showed up. You know, we were taking the next step, I think, this last week in, in, you know, from where we were at against South Florida. So all these things uh, from an execution standpoint to uh, improve on, uh, areas where uh, you know, a bye week uh, you know, is important to, to continue to address continue to build our depth, uh, develop guys, uh, you know, that we uh, know we're going to need throughout the rest of the season. Let's go start with Nick Kelly on the front line. Yeah, uh, I'll ask two special teams questions, that's all right. Uh, Graham Nicholson, you know, he, he got a chance to attempt his first field goal of the season this past game. Um, what, what do you make of just his limited opportunities and making sure he's ready to go? And then second question, uh, we saw Ryan Williams return a punt. Could we see some more of that potentially this season? Yeah. Uh, with Graham, uh, yeah, he just, we've been scoring when we get in the red zone, uh, getting the touchdowns. We haven't been in too many spots uh, until Saturday where we had the, the field goal, 46-ish, I think, 47, somewhere there. Uh, I think he hit it good. Uh, he, I think in pregame, we felt like there, maybe there was a little bit of a breeze coming right to left. Um, probably over, over calculated that. And it wasn't something where I felt like, where I know we all feel like he, uh, Miss hit it or anything, which gotta do a better job of of understanding, you know, uh, the direction or how much uh, how much it's gonna influence the kick. So, yeah, and that's part of being a kicker, right? You know, pregame, during the game, uh, towards the end, I mean, it's gonna change. And so, uh, each side of the field changes. Uh, just you, you got, I you know he expects himself to make that. Uh, we expect him to make it. Uh, he's been a solid, been solid all fall camp. Uh, in regards to Ryan, with uh, with uh, the injury to Cole Adams, that uh, you know was one guy taken off of that uh, area, you know, uh, in, in our depth. And so, Box been back there doing a good job uh, with his opportunities, and we need to continue to build that. And just getting getting Ryan one rep out there, I thought was good. Uh, he did a nice job. Uh, looked very comfortable back there. Uh, there's some other guys, you know, Jim, uh, Jimmy Bernard can do uh, that as well. He's been working on it, uh, not just this year, but in the past. And so we just want to make sure guys uh, continue to get that one rep, feel comfortable. Um, and there's always little things that pop up that guys can learn from. And, and there were some learning opportunities, even with Bach, you know, just staying away from the football on uh, one of the punts that were roll was rolling. Uh, we got to do a better job there, staying away. So uh, everything is, again, new experience, especially for some of these younger guys, freshmen like Ryan and uh, Bach. Uh, but they've done a really nice 
nice job so far. Okay, on the right side of Charlie. Yeah, hey coach, did, did you have any reaction or say anything to guys like Jeremy or any of the other players for what they said after the game about jump around? Yeah, I didn't realize until yesterday and actually Jerm uh, did come in and, and you know, he, he owned it. Uh, then he, I didn't bring it up to him. I didn't even know it happened uh, until uh, yesterday. Just, he was a first class guy and, you know, the emotions and the excitement of the game and all that. Uh, unfortunately, you sometimes say things you, you know, get, get asked to comment on and, and uh, he actually wanted to say something to the team. You know, it's just, we want to be first class and, you know, we slipped up a little bit there he addressed the team yesterday in our team meeting and you know everyone knows uh, who Jerm is and uh, respect the heck out of him you know so um, something like that is something you know it was a great atmosphere out of really you know Wisconsin the environment there uh, was great um, you know uh, I think our guys enjoyed that uh, transition uh, there between the third and fourth quarter just as just as much as anyone so uh, you know nothing but respect for what the environment was and who they are as a program. Far left, Chase. Uh, Coach, how, how much did Jalen Milrow change protections pre-snap against Wisconsin, and how where is he at in his, that part of developing his game? Yep, uh, good question. Uh, it, I'm trying to think through. I feel like there was, uh, you know, I think you get into the situations, uh, probably the latter down distances, third downs, uh, when you see you know, pressures, uh, and I think he did a you know, did a really solid job. Uh, there was one time it wouldn't fall necessarily on, on his lap uh, where there was a little bit of miscommunication across the board, or it didn't happen as fluid, as, you, as, as smooth as you would like. I think we got to the point where we needed to by the time the ball was snapped, uh, but just uh, everyone being on the same page. And that's not just the offensive line at him, that's everyone, you know, and so uh, we could have done a better job across the board. But with regards to Jalen, uh, you know, we, are continually to ask more and more of him as he gets more comfortable with what we do. We know that that is going to need to be the case. Uh, you know, where where he he has full reign right now. Uh, he knows what the expectations are and what we really prefer him to be doing with the checks. Um, and he's been he's been really solid, and that's going to be important for us going into uh, SEC play. We know that for sure. We've got the middle of the room here, Mike. How have you seen Justice uh, contribute to the offense, even in games where he's not getting a ton of carries at this one? Who? Justice Hayes. Oh, Justice Hayes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, right off the bat, you know, getting in the ball. Uh, he can do a lot of things, you know, catching the ball, uh, you know, ran, ran through a tackle right off the, right off the bat, set the tone there. Uh, just uh, some of the carries where he'd have been involved uh, ended up being throws, uh, RPO plays, run, you know, keeps by the quarterback. Uh, and so all of a sudden you get to the middle of the third quarter and you hit another explosive there at the beginning of the fourth. And uh, we're pulling all our guys. And, you know, I know we need him to be in a, in really a, a very productive guy for us. And I thought when he was out there, he was exactly that. We trust and believe in him like no other. Um, the guy who works his tail off every single day. Uh, he's, he's fun to coach. Uh, he's great protection. He's out in the routes. Uh, he's obviously a, a, a huge threat when he's got the ball in his hands. And so, uh, you know, just sometimes the flow of the game and the rotation we have, uh, the ball didn't end up in his hands as much, but the ball will continue to find him because I know Jalen believes in him, uh, our coaching staff believes in him. And so, um, you know, you try to be intentional on some of that stuff. Sometimes it just doesn't go exactly how you planned as far as who gets the touches um, and so forth. Left side, front row, Tony. You have a great math, uh, record in these marquee kind of matchups. You got one coming up. Just how would you, what would you attribute to the to your success in these kind of games? And then how do you approach it with kind of a two week uh, window right now? Yeah, I mean, great players, great coaching staff uh, around you is always what makes it all go. Um, people who are comfortable, you know, going being alongside with you uh, in these big games and these big. Get the SEC play; they're all they're all going to be big, and so uh, you know the players make plays, and it's it's our job just to continue to put them in the best spot, help them continue to gain confidence, uh, you know, remind them that the preparation is what's going to lead to their success, and uh, you know, just a belief a belief in what we do, how we do it. Uh, that's that's to me football. Uh, that's you know how you're successful in anything, and so uh, that's that's what we'll do here with the bye week. 
use a couple days here to just you know relax as, as far as like kind of decompress a little bit seven weeks now these guys have been going i know it's only three games in the season but they've been going for seven weeks as of tomorrow when it comes to practices and uh, this little this little time here where they can you know take care of some school and um, kind of get caught up or just make sure they're on pace and, and working ahead even uh, in those areas that are away from football uh, and, and knock that out so they can do what they love and not have any distractions uh, Thursday and Friday we'll, we'll get back on the practice field and Wednesday uh, you know we'll do some things as well so um, you know these guys need you know the physical physical break as well uh, I think we're in an okay spot you know when it comes to health uh, but you can always be better and uh, that's what a, a bye week uh, gives you stay informed on your job <clears throat> Coach, going back to Jalen, the first touchdown pass to Ryan Williams, it looked like the uh, exact same play as the miss in the first drive to Emmanuel Henderson. How indicative is that uh, redo of Jalen Milrose kind of growth this year uh, out of what you've seen? Yeah, and in both of them, I thought uh, he felt comfortable. He looked comfortable, I think, throughout the game because of our offensive line starts up front with the protection. And, uh, you know, I think he felt that he did a good job really reading the coverage, uh, seeing, seeing where the safety help might be. Really hit and hit it in rhythm. Um, a little tighter coverage on the first one to, to E man, uh, but you know Ryan had a step, and you know that was that was the difference. But I think even just you know kind of looking at the, tra tra the trajectory of the ball, uh, you know, and having to throw a little flatter so that the help could get there in time, but also not making it too flat to where he had a little room for error. Uh, I thought it was just a great throw. Uh, hit him in stride. Ryan did his thing, secured it. Uh, it was really fun, especially on a third down and third down and long, third seven, third eight. So, uh, huge, huge point in the game there uh, for us to, to get some get get the ball in the end zone uh, and not just be something that's a three or four yard game with a 30, 30 plus yard explosive. Back left, Steven. You mentioned Bird, who coach at the star, but what does it do for your defense to have a guy that can consistently put the opponent in a rough position every time? Yeah, I thought about the, you know, just even that sequence. I believe we forced a punt right after that, and or it was a takeaway maybe, uh, and just how the field flipped, just with a, a few plays there, and uh, James James does that for you. Uh, as long as we give him uh, what we need, uh, you know, from a protection standpoint, you know, you're going to get a good snap with Nealon. Um, he's rock solid, and uh, just uh, James puts everything into it, uh, and his all his energy and power into that kick and. Uh, Technically, he's just so sound, uh, so consistent. So uh, he's been that way all fall camp, uh, and you know we, we got a lot of trust in him, and it's uh, something our whole team, you know, when he goes out there, they believe in him. And so that's it's a weapon to have, and as you said, uh, it flips the flips the script, and now the defense, uh, you know, with a little more field space to work with, uh, can can uh, set the tone, especially when you get into those backed up situations. I think three times inside the twenty yard line um, with what James did as far as backing. So, um, huge weapon for us. Back uh, right side of the room. Uh, Coach, I think you talked about it earlier with the going into a bye week. How do you approach an early bye week, and what are some of the things you want to see uh, going into it with SEC play, obviously, next week? Yeah, no, that's good. That's good because I think every bye week is a little different. Uh, early bye weeks, uh, you know, again, there has been seven weeks of uh, football that these guys have been kind of going as far as hitting each other, but it is early in the season still. Uh, you know, for us, they just, We'll take a few of these days here, like I said, just to, to let the coaching staff uh, start working ahead uh, on, on the schematics, uh, the game plan. Um, there's obviously some recruiting. There's other parts of the program that are the coaches focus their attention as well. Uh, but then from a player standpoint, just trying to get them, you know, a little bit of a mental break here for a second. Um, it's only a couple days, but to let them be students here for a few days as well, just uh, not just the athletic part. So. Um, you know, later on, uh, you kind of kind of adapt, uh, even not just uh, when you practice, but how long you practice. Um, but we'll have some really good solid practices here at the latter part of the week, Thursday, Friday, Sunday. Uh, we'll get us a jump on the, uh, the next uh, next game with uh, Georgia. Emily Grace, right in the middle there. Coach, you touched on it in your open about the decision to be so aggressive in the last 36 seconds of the first half. Can you elaborate more on that and what you and Coach Sheridan saw that led to that decision? We had, you know, 36 seconds. Uh, you got you got a field goal kicker you believe in, uh, and uh, I think 
three timeouts, if I remember right. So you got a lot working for you. Uh, we get any type of gain at all, you know, and we're in bounds. You know, we're going to use the timeout there and see if we can get a first down or two. And the guys just went out and made a play. Uh, great time in the pocket. I know Jalen, I think, got hit a little bit as he was making the throw. But anticipation, I think you saw, you know, not to break down the plays. I know that's not the question, but I think you saw a trust uh, and anticipation in Jalen on that throw. Uh, as Ryan is just taking off, uh, the throw is being made. Uh, good read of the defense. And uh, Ryan doing his thing again. Uh, set us up for another explosive, uh, you know, turns the first read on the play. Um, there's other guys that I think were coming into windows that we could have hit as well. But uh, it all started with protection on both those plays. And when you have confidence in the guys up front and protect your quarterback and a quarterback that's going to make smart decisions. Uh, and, uh, you know, we've been, I've been over coaching those probably early on with Jalen to take care of it in this situation or that. Uh, and, uh, you know, the more and more it's just these little small little blurps that I know I'm giving him and he's on the same page. And so that's part of the progression of us working together more and more on the progression of now you take that to the film room and talk about why we were aggressive in that moment uh, and then seeing it pay off. Uh, it just gives your team a lot of confidence because the defense knows that anytime, you know, if we just give the ball to the offense, whether it's off a takeaway and we have red zone, you know, uh, or two minute, two minute drill, uh, just a lot of confidence that goes back and forth playing good team football. All right, we have time for one last question. Colin on far left. Hey, Jalen, to, to Parker, if I could. Uh, first, you mentioned the pogs. Um, you know, a lot of, I'm, I'm curious with this bye week, um, how you've seen Ryan Williams kind of respond to what he's been able to do across these seven weeks for you, for you guys and kind of how he should reflect and, and kind of move forward um, as SEC, SEC play uh, starts out soon. Uh, and then uh, do you have uh, updates on the status of the play for Saab, Malik and Warren, and uh, uh, Richard Young? Yep. Uh, as far as uh, Ryan, the thing that impressed, impressed me so much about him is, is the business-like mentality he has when it comes to football, but the way he's able to balance it with a personality that is just fun to be around. Um, loose when you have that time to be loose. Um, it just happened, you know, probably an hour ago, a chance to just be around him and and uh, smiling and, and enjoying being who he is and then turn it into this, you know, beast on the football field uh, through these first three games. And, you know, there's going to be ups and downs just like anyone uh, for him uh, that will come. But I, I'm confident in his maturity well beyond his years, being only 17. And, uh, you know, uh, I don't feel like I'm pumping him up too much because I think he's getting the job done on the football field. And he's, he's – uh, make it happen there but uh, it's fun seeing that balance of just you know let him be him uh, that's what I want all our players to be uh, but he's he's a joy to be around because uh, when he gets on the football field when he's in the weight room um, man, there's a there's a lot of focus uh, and you know I know he prioritizes things even like sleep you know he's just really locked in on what needs to be done for him to be the best he can be um, as far as injuries Cole uh, you know getting this is a good time in the bye week. I would expect that here as we get to the latter part of the week, um, he's continuing to move forward. Um, we can kind of see where we won't push him too hard here at the end of the week, week uh, with physicality and things like that, make him vulnerable. Um, but I think you know, it's positive steps that we're seeing. Um, Quay, uh, Quay, you, with the evaluation of, of him, I think again, you know, bye week's huge. Uh, I don't I think he probably later in the week will you know, be able to do some things for us and we'll certainly be careful with him. We don't want to have any setbacks, uh, but I would feel like it's uh, you know, a positive, positive uh, progression for him already here just in the last couple of days. And uh, who's the third one? Uh, Malachi and then Ma oh, yeah, four. Uh, Malachi uh, got obviously uh, a hit to the head, blow to the head. Mm -hmm. um, he popped up and ran off the field. But I also know that there's a protocol we got to go through it. So, um, a lot of positive signs there with him already here through these first couple of days. And you know, we just got to go through that, uh, that progression that uh, needs to be done when it comes to those type of injuries. Uh, and Richard, you know, I'm not sure on Richard a little bit. I think his, uh, you know, kind of got to continue to evaluate here. And, uh, 
probably have some follow up here maybe towards the end of the week. All right, thank you. Awesome, thank you. Real time.